Hello and welcome back to Master Gardening. I'm your host Bud Kwok. We've had a little shower today but it's clearing up. It's going to be a little bit wet out here. But <laughs> I've got my good shoes on too. We've got a special guest for you today, Alan Dacia, a successful Paducah businessman and we're at his home slash vineyard slash future winery. And uh, what makes this so special is we're going to get a chance to look at a winery before it really becomes a winery. I'm going to go find Alan. Stay tuned. Are all vineyards clean like this, Alan? Uh, some are, some are. Kind of varies. <laughs> Takes a lot of time. It, it, I would say it does, but they really look good. And these grapevines are only two years old. They look like they're about four or five. Two years old. If you keep them clean, they'll grow a lot more. Is that's, that right? That's, that's the, the key? main trick. Keep Not just lots of fertilizer? Up. No, that's fertilizer. You want to really keep the fertilizer down. Alan, first question I've got is, how come not soybeans or tobacco or something? Why, why a vineyard? Well, soybeans takes a little more land. And of course, tobacco, uh, it's kind of phasing out over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something kind of different and unusual. Uh, these vines here, this is Cabernet Franc. These are the uh, French vines. Uh, they're the, one of the best table grape, or I'm sorry, wine grapes you can get. And uh, really the main thing of them, they're a little more finicky. Now these are the Vinifera French grapes, not your, your American table grape. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're grafted onto a rootstock of American root rootstock, right? That's correct. You I'm, hit, I'm you been hit. reading up on it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to graft them. The main reason is uh, phloxera is a disease, or it's actually a little bug, and if you don't graft them, they'll actually eat the roots and just kill the plant. And if it wasn't for the American rootstock, there wouldn't be any French grapes, right? That's correct. About 1860, uh, the French started importing American vines, and when they did, it brought the disease over with them, and it killed almost all of their crops. So, so yeah. all of theirs has this little section right down here is actually American and then from here up is all French just like you do uh, an apple tree or anything like that. Uh-huh. Okay. So we're going to do a little picky. Okay, show us the technique on cutting these things. Well, the main thing, I like these. Some people have a little hook knife. And you got to be really careful because if you, <laughs> they're really sharp. <laughs> One day I was pruning and I clipped the very end of my little finger off of these things. So I've done that before myself and it's so easy to do. As a matter of fact, one day I think I cut myself three or four times. They are very sharp. Uh, give you an idea kind of what we're looking at right here this is a vine that the frost hit right when the flowers it was getting ready to flower about uh, middle of May and what that is you get poor uh, fruit set and that's the reason this is real thin so that mm. gives you an idea of what happens now how sweet are those grapes the, these are running about uh, 22 to 24 bricks and the brick is uh, sugar content in a liter per liter uh, your table grapes as we said run about 17. I've been testing those a lot, buying them at the grocery. So how do you know when to pick exactly? I've got a little refractor meter and uh, we have it down there and I'll show you. We'll pull a couple grapes off, drop it in. It looks like a little telescope mm -hmm. and it'll show a blue line exactly how much sugar contents in them. And where's the target? Where are you targeting? Most of the time, California, they try to go around uh, 22, 24, 25 bricks. And that makes uh, for the alcohol, the, the sugar makes the alcohol and the sweetness mm -hmm. of the wine. And it's about a 0.55 ratio, you'll go down to uh, 12 to 14 percent alcohol, that's what you're after. The yeast eats the sugar and makes the alcohol? Yes, yes. Okay, puts off the carbon dioxide, but we'll talk about that later. Yes, it's okay. all the little bubbles. And okay. in champagne, it makes it the effervescence We've too. got quite a bit of uh, cutting here to do, we might have to get Tammy Thompson in here to help us out. I, I think. think that'd be very good. Yeah. Her and Dan. Yes, both of them. Okay. We put them all to work. Those are beautiful vines. That uh, I don't even see any uh, Japanese beetles or anything anything on uh, on these. Is that, uh, you've been spraying to kill the Japanese beetles? That's in that number one bug, right? Yes, it is. We uh, started in the first of June. Uh, the Japanese beetle come in and uh, they'll just uh, eat your leaves down to the stems. Uh, I've seen that. I take sevens dust and the main tricks on it, the beetles usually attack from this area up. So you, you really don't want to get the yeah you don't tender. want to get the sevens on the fruit because it'll stain the fruit it doesn't hurt it but it stains it okay and what diseases are we looking at well you got um, um, phylloxera that's why we do the rootstock so uh -huh. that prevents that we got the moles um, black rot black rot I heard so much about that yeah there's it's, several sprays for that the same thing is uh, is a uh, 
tomatoes, is your, roses. Is your roses, yes, your roses, same fungus. Powder mildew, downy mildew, that's the two main ones. This area is more of a downy mildew. Downy's caused by moisture. Uh -huh. And of course we have a lot of heavy dews and then the rain. White powder, yeah. So you pray for that. And the downy mildew is actually on the bottom. The powder mildew is on the top and it's usually when it's dry. Huh. So there's two different sprays uh, for these. For these, you, there's no damage to them. So it's, this is very inexpensive to grow then, right? <laughs> Wrong. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm making a point. And then you have the deer and the raccoons. Yes, squirrels. And squirrels and, right. and what and the one, the birds. Birds. How come the birds aren't eating these things? I took the netting off last night to prepare for this. Uh, if they weren't flying over this way. They, you, this is the netting. You gotta have the netting, right? Yes, this is 18 foot netting. And actually these are uh, just drooped completely only and I pin it down. And uh, you go through here and that's the only way to keep the birds off of them. They'll eat the whole crop if you don't, if, as soon as they get ripe, they eat them, right? Well, the sugar gets around 10%, they will start cleaning them. 10 bricks? Them. Yes, 10 bricks, they'll just take way them right off. Way before you're gonna pick. So yes. if you don't have some kind of protection, you can just kiss it goodbye, right? Yes, they'll eat, okay. they'll eat every berry you have. <laughs> it is. Uh, those are really good. You didn't come out here and tape those up like that so we could photograph those today, did you? That's well, what? I thought about it. Yeah, that is tight. Good to eat yes. Try one. They're actually going to be sh sweeter than your table grapes. You got seeds in them. Is really the only difference. Mm -hmm. They're going to run. Table grapes run about 17% uh, sugar. Mm. And these are run about 22 to 24. No, this morning. This is the best time of the day to be cutting, isn't it? Yes, that's the time you want to cut. Uh, usually, want the temperature as low as possible. Normally, you cut in the morning. Usually, you don't want to pick during a uh, after a rain because that can dilute your grapes. Ah, dilutes the sugar. Yes, just like any other kind of fruit. Yes. So you want to really try to. If the rain was coming uh, yesterday, I would have picked yesterday morning. That would have been the best time. The other main thing that you hear so much about a grape, what about acid? Uh, acid uh, is really what gives you your, what they call the mouth feel or the taste. And um, what you're really looking for, usually around a pH about 3.2 to 3.4. And we're talking about acid, we're not talking about hydrochloric acid, right? No, no. Tartaric acid in most cases. It's natural, organic acid? Yes. Yes, it is. And it's uh, really actually what they use in almost a sweet tart. It's the same, same thing darned. they use to make sweet tarts out of it. But uh, main thing here on these, uh, these type of vines, you've got a 36 inch T right here. And then everything comes up off of this. I've got two catch wires. Here's a wire here. And then here's a wire here. And what you try to do is you want three leaves maximum as through your canopy. Main problem you have three on these, th three leaves. So if you look through here, there's a lot of open spaces. Uh -huh. A lot of people have a, they get too full mm -hmm. and it promotes disease. Ah, yeah, so no air circulation through there. No air. So you try to keep it real thin. And the other trick you do here on pruning is you want these stems here to come up a hand width apart. So you have a hand here, your, here's your next one, here's your next one. So you, when you prune this, it'll be February to March, you'll go through here and prune off any others. Is that because the, the, it's too much for the, the, you'll get inferior grapes because the vine can't produce, can't produce that much, really, yeah. good grapes? Yeah, you get too it, much. You don't get small grapes, do you? Like, I know of well, what vegetables happens, and things. Yeah, what happened is uh, the sugar won't get up, uh, they can't ripen, is what happened. Ah. They'll, they'll keep it low sugar and they, the taste just won't get there. You overwhelm the it's plant with too much. Yes, it's just more than it can handle. You know, you think nature would be smarter than that, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. Now, you what, would. nature's probably not worried about our making wine though, right? No, no, they're probably not <laughs> looking for the optimal <laughs> sugar amount and everything else. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, these, these have hung on. Um, they came out, they budded. I think the bud was about April 15th, which is about normal for these. The trouble we get into these is the frost. And um, these are more finicky. These are the most finicky plants you can grow on the grapes. And the, the, the Cabernet uh, Franc is? The Franc, all of the uh, vinifera. These are all the wine. This is Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, the Pinot Noir. Riesling? Riesling. Chardonnay. 
as opposed to the Concords, the Catawbas, and Niagara's. They'll take a much lower temperature. The, you'll have less damage to freezing, all of that. All of that so. so, But the taste is what you go for. The taste, yeah. On the Concords, it's kind of like your Welch's grape juice. You have that after strong aftertaste. Uh -huh. These do not have that. That's really the main thing, uh, the difference. Is um, that why you add so much water to the uh, Concord? Uh, that's part of it. Uh, you offset wow. it with sugar. Uh, sugar will offset some of that, they call it foxiness, but uh, that's the main thing there. And I we're, think we're about done here. We're pretty much done. We miss, you always miss a couple, but that's okay. Leave some for the birds, right? Yeah, they'll take care of themselves, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But here's, if she wants to see the end of this, this is uh, really how you, this is 200,000 PSI wire. <whistles> High tensile wire. Uh, you can't hardly bend the stuff. And then you put it on these stretchers. And that's really all you do instead of doing all the labor, instead of tying everything, I've got little ties that I pack around. You could sit here and tie each stem to a wire if you wish, but what you do is you put two catch wires and just tuck them in between and it cuts down on your labor. And labor is a key, cut down as much as often as you can. And this is very hands intensive. Okay. This, I'll tell you, let's go make some wine. Sounds very good. You just won the grand prize in the Selective Service Sweepstakes. Just for registering with Selective Service, you hit the jackpot. You can now get college loans, government jobs, and job training. All for filling out that little registration card at the post office. Men must register with Selective Service when they turn 18. Go to sss.gov or the post office. It's the law. Yeah, I, know, I make homemade wine myself, but I buy almost everything I, I make, my berries and my, and my grapes, but I do pick some, and I grow some around the house, but I don't use anything like this at my house. What in the heck is, heck is this? Well, this is an air blast sprayer, and, and this saves me a lot of time, it's really what this does. This blows out uh, about 60 to 80 mile an hour wind. My God, it'd knock you down, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, it, it blows the vines very hard, and it, what it does, it gives you good coverage, and it's... Uh, gives your uh, sprays full coverage on the leaves on both sides. And, and we uh, talked about the birds eating the grapes and you wouldn't have a crop if you didn't have the birds, but if without yeah. this, they would all be dry or black rot and you wouldn't have any grapes either, right? This, right. this is key to have in this, this area, especially as humid as it is, that without this, you wouldn't be able to survive. That's right. You? If you got a large amount, if you got a small amount, I hand spray most of this, which it, it takes hours to spray it. Uh -huh. But this, I can spray everything in about an hour and 15 minutes. And what, what do you have in there? Is that... Uh... This is just, uh, usually you use, on these vines you can use sulfur. A lot of the American vines, sulfur is not available, uh, or you can't use it because it actually defoliate the vines. Mm -hmm. And these viniferas, I use sulfur, it's one of the best, and it's all actually considered organic. This is Hurricane Dossie? Yes. That would... <laughs> yes, a big blowhard. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Hot air, huh? Hot yeah. air. Okay. And it really does blow hard. It, it'll blow through this vine and it'll, it'll actually blow spray on the next vine. There's surely a, another use for that. We've got to figure out whatever. Well, a lot of the guys, fruit guys, use it. We could put Brad, Bradley's name on there. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. And actually, you could uh, blow the leaves off your yard. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, it will blow. Okay. It, it does a good job. Well, let's go down to stemmer decrusher, de crusher de stemmer. What, okay. what is it? Crusher de stemmer. That's next. Yes, that's next. Do you have these for breakfast very often? Uh, we, I eat them all the time. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, they're good. Alan, this is a great display. Uh, all these grapes uh, were able to be harvested within a short period of time for you to do this. Yes. But th th what is this exactly? Well, this, this is all everything I grow right here. Uh, the first one here is a Riesling. It's a uh, mostly a German grape. It's a light, spicy grape, mm. and the, it, it's a, a lot of people make it into a sweet wine. Uh, this is Cabernet Franc. This is what we've been picking today. Okay. Uh, this is Merlot. Uh, this one may not grow in this area. The winters may not allow it to grow. It, it kind of kills it down. Uh, this is Pinot Noir. This is mostly grown in Burgundy. My favorite. 
And a lot of people love this one. This one's a real finicky grape. As you can tell, it's really a tight grape. And of course, when it's tight like this, it, you got more chance of disease. Oh, no air, rock. air circulation, yeah. Yeah, no air, and this is a looser one. This is Cabernet Sauvignon, and this is the king. This is supposed to be, uh, if you're a really true wine connoisseur, this is what everybody really loves. And uh, this last one's a Chardonnay, and this isn't a very good example of Chardonnay. We picked these about a month ago, so this is just what was left. Of the popular wine, French wines, this has pretty well got them covered right here. Of course, yes. there's some, some order, but these are the, the six top grapes as far as I'm concerned. You got the best two whites, the most popular, yes. and then the four, the, the, the Cabernet Franc is a, it, it's, it's really coming into its own now. It's, it's, yes. it's, a lot of people don't know about it. Okay, I see you've got... This is called a refractor meter. Okay. And what we do here is you take this out into the uh, vineyard and you're checking your uh, grapes to see if how sweet they are. So all you do is take a, a drop of juice and then you just lay this down and look through it. And what happens is, ever how much sugar content's in it, uh, the light reflects and gives you an actual reading. And like this one here, this is close to 23 to 24% sugar. And that's a mystery of life. We don't know how it works, right? No, no, I don't know how it works. <laughs> I haven't built one of these yet. This tells so you exactly okay. how sweet it is without having to mix it up in liquid and, and check your hydrometer. Yes. And what you do here is you'd actually take uh, grapes, you have to crush them, you fill it up to right about here, and uh, and it floats, and ever how high it floats, it tells you actually sugar content. And alcohol content. And alcohol content. It's okay. available. Okay, let's do some crushing. We've not been wanting to get it on this crusher over here. Let's Sounds good. Let's get to it. This looks awful dangerous. What, what, what in the crap yeah. is this? Yeah, you got to keep your hands out of this, but this is a crusher destemmer, and what it does, it takes the stems and then lightly crushes the grapes. Uh. So you get ready for your next process. Okay, let's get going. Let's we'll do turn it on real quick. And throw a this is going to be loud. Very loud. Holy crap! Earplugs. Look how clean these stems are. No grapes, don't lose any grapes in that. That's wonderful. That would took us three weeks to pull all those grapes off that thing. Let's go do some pressing now, Alan. Sounds good. Someday, I'll be a ballerina, just like them. And this will be my stage, where I twirl and float and swirl. Someday, this won't just be my wish. Someday, I won't be sick. Okay, Alan, normally after the decrusher, that pipe that we're pouring into the buckets comes right over to this blue container over here and it yep. mass produces and mass crushes it. But we're just doing the buckets today for demonstration purposes. Yes. Okay, what is this? This is a, uh, it's called a bladder press. This is all stainless steel. Almost everything you have has to be stainless steel. And it's all been sanitized. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour it in and we'll get some juice. And the first juice is called free run. Free run is just, uh, there's no pressing in it. Okay, what, why is it called a bladder? That's a bladder inside there, right? Yes. And we're gonna fill it up with water, air? Actually, in this case, water or air. This one's a water one, and this will expand and then crush Press the it grape. out against the, uh, yeah. the holes, the strainer. Yeah. Okay. And this, we'll just pour this right in slowly. It'll get splattered. I haven't learned to do this without splattering. There you go, Tammy. 
Oh, look at that wine. That's, that's going to be wine in about 15 minutes, right? And that's considered the top grade, what comes out uh, free run there. A lot of people will separate that from the other. I'll tell you what. That's, that's, that's the expensive wine right there. Yeah, this is Cabernet Franc. Usually you don't press the front, but we're going to go ahead and press it today for a demonstration. And then it'll sit in a big container like that for about two weeks. Oh, man. Well, it fermates. Now, tell me you'd like that. We'll save some of this for you. That is very sweet. Oh, my. Back in the old days, they had the ones that cranked down on those, but that was manual labor, right? You still do. Still do. Still do. A lot of guys still use that. And even some with, of the big winers. But the old that. wooden... Slats, slats mm -hmm. and stuff, yeah. Main trouble is keeping those clean. Yeah. That's one of the big things about making wine or work with honey, anything else, is you sterilize and everything. That takes you longer to get everything clean and sterilized than it does to do the work itself. Yes, it does. It, it'll take me longer to clean all this up. And I told you I have an appointment in about 15 minutes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> and we should be done. What we're doing here, we're just allowing the air to come out of the bladder. This will fill with water, and then this will start pressing in a minute. You start seeing it jumping out at you. Yeah. Really what these are, um, this container here, you'll let it set for about two weeks. Uh, all this juice would go in here with the skins. Uh, the really difference between uh, red wine and white wine is you leave the skins on. So if you took the skins off that right now, it wouldn't be a blue wine, it would be a white, white wine. Be white. That's why white Zinfandel, you can have dark Zinfandel, mm -hmm. blush, uh -huh. depending on how long the, the uh, the skins are on there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. Now we fill the air. It's full of water. Now we go next. Now, how'd you learn how to do this all? You went to school? Well, I, I took a ca class from UC Davis uh, in California. California. That's oh the Napa Valley Research Center. Oh, that's where to go, isn't it? Yes, it is. They're, they're pretty knowledgeable. And, uh, and I went to Napa about nine years ago, and that's really how I fell in love with this. Uh, Did they force you to drink wine while you were out there? Well, they, <laughs> they tied me up. That's, that's part of it. You had to learn, you know, it's to learn the hard way, trial yeah. and error. Yeah. One more glass, one more glass. Yeah. And as you can see, we're starting, starting to come out of there now. Off of the press. Uh, what our intent is, in about two years, we hope to have a winery. We have a farm about a mile and a half away. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to have the winery up and going about that time. In about two years. About two years. And then there's another one uh, out on the edge of McCracken County, just inside Ballard. Yes. Bob Long's got Bob one Long. just about where you are. So. Yes. So you all be uh, the first two wineries in Western Kentucky. Now, why don't we have more wineries in Western Kentucky? How come Illinois has got them all? What's the deal on that? And that I'm not really sure. Uh, now, wait a minute. I don't really know. Now, there's a know. state of Kentucky very helpful making in winery business. And it's fair, fair. Fair. Yeah, on Illinois camera, they're going to see this. Yeah, Illinois does a better <laughs> job. They yeah, have the, more uh, subsidies. And the they, laws they and what it. have you, they promote it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got a guy in Callaway County who's looking at it. There's a guy near Owensboro who's looking to do it. So The closest one is Brevard's in Hopkinsville right now. Uh, David Hall in Princeton. Princeton, that's right. He's Jim just getting going though too, right? Yes, he, he should be open next year. He had the alcohol vote already so that he's able to sell the wine. That's the key to be able to sell the wine at your location. Yes. And, and that's uh, one of the reasons Kentucky's been so far behind, I think, is because of dry counties. So you got to go through almost so much trouble to get... To, it's not, you, not worth it to have a winery if you can't It's very sell. tough. It's very tough. You need yeah. to serve... Uh, really using the distributorship is really difficult. Um, it's not cost effective. You need to be mm -hmm. able to serve out of your winery, do tastings. We've got the Kentucky Vineyard Society fighting for us, and we've got this new group in Western Kentucky that me and you are part of. Yes, West Kentucky Wine Growers. Yeah. Uh, website's www.wkwa.org. Or contact me or you or Bradley Rankin, the president. Uh-oh. Yes. Didn't have it on that type. Oh, my. <laughs> you do have insurance, that's right. I'm uh, afraid so. Okay, okay. Now what, what goes next? After the, after well, we're going to squish this out and then we're going to throw it into a bigger container. And this, we're getting the pressure right up. So this, yeah, let's, uh, let's take that off. Don't want this thing to blow up on us. No. Okay. And then we go into the bigger container? Yes. I think we, we have a larger volume. Here. This is a 211 gallon container. I hear? Yes. This does about uh, a little over 5,000 bottles. Okay. This is more of a commercial type. Um, this is what a lot of the amateurs use. They'll use a container like this. This is a keg, beer keg. This is 15 gallon. This is a five gallon carboy. Mm -hmm. This is glass. 
This is an airlock, so you got to keep the air off of it. And this, of course, is a one gallon. And a lot of people make fruit wines and things of that nature. I've got two dozen of these cooking in my utility room right now. Yes, I have. Now, the process of making wine, make it real easy, is you get the fruit or whatever you want to flavor it, but yes. the sugar and the yeast, you're going to put yeast, yeast with this uh, tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow, you wait 24 hours, kill the natural yeast, put your yeast with it. Yes. It immediately starts, almost immediately starts working. Next day, it'll be bubbling. Puts off alcohol plus carbon dioxide, which bubbles out. That's what these, these locks on here are for. So the, yes. the gas can get out, but the air, air. can't get in because the air's bad. Yeah, if the air gets in, it turns into vinegar. Yeah. Well, Alan, we're going to keep, keep up with you. Okay. And uh, two Thanks, years sir. from now, we're going to come back, and I want you to be able to sell us some wine. Purple okay. Toad. Okay. Purple and maybe toad we'll have Bob Long's too. Maybe we'll have two of them. Good. I don't know. This, 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 this may be the way to end all of our shows, Tammy. Do you think? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> this is his last glass. I don't think he's got any more. You gotta eat, you gotta drink all your mistakes. Don't forget about that. See you next time. Oh, that is good. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs>